Today's podcast is sponsored by Antler Cold Brew Coffee. What makes this stuff special? In a word, caffeine. Numerous studies have shown that having caffeine before a workout can improve a host of things, including endurance, focus, power, and fat burning. This is old news, but in recent years, other studies have even shown that ingesting caffeine the way nature intended in coffee is more effective than with pharmaceutical refined caffeine. This is attributed to the synergies that caffeine and all the antioxidants in coffee have when they work together. I've linked some of these studies in the show notes on my site. So enough of the science behind this stuff, let me tell you about it on a more practical level. First, you simply smash a shot of cold brew coffee, concentrate pre-workout in your face and get a caffeine buzz that rivals some of the most hardcore pre-workout supplements out there. Caffeine is completely legal in all sports, and this product is ideal for guys who are looking to perform on a high level but want to keep their stacks natural and know what they are taking. We've been given some samples that we'll be taking during this episode, so if we end up grappling in the studio when we should be discussing more important things, just bear with us as this is experimental. If you guys would like to make an order for some awesome antler cold brew pre-workout or some of the other products, make your way over to the website at www.antlercoffee.co.za. If you use the code BIGAL, you'll get a 10% discount on any order placed with them. So hurry on up, get over to www.antlercoffee.co.za and get 10% off any order. The Big Al Podcast with your host, Al Bishop, unfiltered and uncut. Uh, sitting across from me today, I've got the gigantic uh, man that's Vessel Mostat, uh, undefeated heavyweight prospect. Uh, welcome to the show, man. Thanks very much for your time. I, I know you guys have got a busy schedule at the moment. It's filming and media requirements and training and work and life and it's uh, a lot of things happening. Just want to say thank you very much for joining me and giving me up some of your time, man. Awesome, man. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. Cool, man. Uh, Vessel, let's just start. Uh, you recently returned from the States. You were training at uh, AKA. I'm very jealous. Uh, just give us an idea of what it was like, man. We, we, we saw pictures of you rubbing shoulders with the likes of, of Daniel Cormier, Kane Velasquez, and a few. I mean, it's, it's a serious gym. There's a lot of massive champions in there. And, and what was the experience like? Yeah, uh, thanks, man. Yeah, um, it was one hell of an experience to start with. Sure. Um, just to see, one of the things I wanted to go see is what, what the benchmark is. You know, what is the best of the best in terms of gyms and in terms of the their work ethic and the amount of hours they put in um, and how they go about it. So um, I wanted to gain experience and um, look, it wasn't something that's just for the Andrew fight. I would have gone regardless of who I'm fighting. It's something to, as a fighter, to become better. Um, I obviously took advantage of the fact that DC is there, you know, with the wrestling and stuff. And uh, I don't think it's a, it's a big secret that I don't want to go to the ground with that, with uh, Andrew. Sure. Um, so yeah, but the work ethic is amazing. Um, all the fighters there, you know, whether they are pro prospects or pro already, um, they train to train. You know, there's no small talk. I mean, it's, it's a bunch of nice guys, you know, afterwards there will be small talk and joking around. But when training's on its own, you know, and, and once you're professional, um, especially those of us who still has a job, you know, I've got a business as well. Sure. Um, when, I, when I'm at training, I want to train. You know, I don't want to be interrupted or, you know, talk about how's your day been, you know. Although I care for, for my brothers training with me, when I'm training, I want to train, you know. Um, so yeah, they were, they're very serious. Um, the coaches there are phenomenal. Um, uh, those of you who are aware of the, the history behind some of the coaches, um, Hector Fernandez was the one who helping me out mostly. Sure. Then the, one of the co-founders and the owner, Javier Mendez, Javier Mendez yeah. uh, phenomenal, not just coach, but a guy as well. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. Um, then you get guys like, um, Leandro Vera, who's a, a second Dan Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, was also extremely helpful you know um he, he allowed me to make gopro footage of all our training because they know um that's one thing they knew that i went through a lot of effort to get there you know it's a 30 sure. hour flight sure uh, it costs a lot of money yeah. um, <laughs> it's a lot of money to yeah, get there cause it's five weeks you know yeah sure um javier let me train for free which was pretty awesome um i got some quotes from other gyms like um, american top team etc who were crazy expensive um javier let me train for free and um yeah uh, i got gopro footage that i was able to bring back so that means you know you're not going to change your total fighting way in five weeks i mean it's it's not how it works yes but you do get 
pushed in the right direction? Do you see some things that you'd like to work on more, some things that's more important than others? Um, so being able to f film everything on the GoPro, you know, and having it now to look back on and to train with, sitting with Walt and Johan and Swin and, and working through it, I think that, that makes it worth the while. Yeah, geez, man, that's, uh, th I think that's quite important because, I mean, uh, especially with, uh, let's say, jiu-jitsu side, th there's so much involved to it and it's mm. to remember moves and setups and things like that and escapes is very difficult. So to have something like that to bring back with you is, mm. that's, a, th that's a very cool thing. It's actually quite nice. I, I've never actually heard of anybody saying that they actually brought some footage back with them to go back mm. and study and, and reverse and go through that. In that, uh, you got to get a couple of rounds in with Daniel Cormier obviously um, he, he's in a different weight class but he's a heavy guy and he's quite used to dealing with tall fighters so th th what was that like man I mean that's that must have been a surreal moment to fight with <laughs> arguably the best light heavyweight in the world uh, and you got to get some rounds in with him and, and yeah. from what I see from Daniel Cormier he just seems like a generally nice guy and he's yeah. willing to help people and, and, and what was that like yes but uh, Daniel Cormier <coughs> Um, I don't easily get starstruck, sure. but I was, you know, having your headgear put on and, and um, it was just me and DC sparring that yeah. time. It wasn't a mixture or whatever. We got our three rounds. We, did, we sparred on more than one occasion. Um, he asked me back to spar with him, which was also very nice. Um, yeah, putting it on, I literally, I think, I, I, I wouldn't like to admit it, but I think the, f the first half of the first round, I was, I was like pausing. <laughs> you know, it was, it was sure. a bit of a something to take in first and then I sure. started to relax and box. Uh, probably the whole first round um and you could see why he's a little olympic wrestler yeah. um our oh man is he the way he shoots and goes for a takedown is as, as as quick as a featherweight you know yeah um and uh, like you said he's used to um, fighting tall guys uh, my reach didn't make much of an, a difference on that um and as far as him as a person you know a very very decent guy um and committed you, there's a reason why he's the champ you know when he trains, after a training, he's also got sort of like a mentorship role there. I think a senior role, yes, you know, because yes. he coaches a lot of the, he coaches the wrestling at the whole um, AKA San Jose. Um, and after training sessions, after sparring, you know, the, they give all the coaches a chance to talk. And he's also always got so much uh, insightful things to say. You know, um, for instance, when we were doing um, our grappling sessions, um, there was a lot of good guys. I mean, John Fitch for the guys who know UFC. Yeah, yeah. Um, Josh Thompson, those Josh Thompson, his wrestling is also on the next level. Um, and while DC would be showing a, a certain drill or move or whatever, um, John Fitch, for instance, would say, okay, but don't you think this will work? You know, and where a lot of guys, you know, do things that I have a problem with, with the fact that they think they're unteachable or they would know everything, um, Daniel wasn't like that, you know. Sure. He, he took a second and he listened to what John Fitch had to say and he said, I think you're right you know let's do it this way this won't work um stuff like that so um yeah he's a he's a very decent guy okay um <clears throat> one of the big things that comes back from uh, guys that have gone overseas uh, to train like you mentioned att and and uh, you know like jp Bays, it was a team alpha male one of the one of the big things the guys brought back was kind of that um we're up there with the standard you know we, we we can hang with the with the best in the world and, and then we can keep up with them you've obviously mentioned now um the, the, there's a very good work ethic and and the guys are, are very approachable and so on um but one of the big things that came back was the major difference is the amount of people on the mats and the amount of sparring partners on the mat. So, so did you find <coughs> that 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 you were able to to hang out to hang with the UFC guys, wherever it was? Just the major difference was kind of the amount of partners, the training partners on the mat. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I believe in the utmost importance of a, of a good training partner. You know, sure. Um, and there were heaps. They were in abundance. Um, uh, especially at everywhere that was one of my main decisions that and the fact that Javier let me train for free was that there are heavyweights there a guy you can mark my words you will you will know his name in a couple of months is Justin Willis yes Justin Willis he, yeah, so he, he's just about to make his debut he just did make his debut I think he already did oh, he's also fighting in August yeah um, I spot him a lot of the times and um, he is he is the next big thing in my eyes a heavyweight um, fighter but then there's other guys you know um, because of uh, Leandro Vera, the BJJ guy there, the BJJ classes have their own heroes, you know. Um, I've only like lately really started following BJJ as an as a individual sport, um, but there's some big names there, you know, who've won the ADCC and 
stuff like that. Um, so, and then you take guys who's no longer as competitive, but they were champs in strike force, you know, before that with all those years and years of experience, you know, I can't even remember all the names, but I yeah. mean, there were guys <laughs> so who was I was sparring with there sure. that was just as good as DC, you know, sure. even better. Um, so going there, you know, it wasn't just DC. Some of those guys there, especially the older ones, you know, who've been around the block, um, had a couple of good tricks, you know, you can sure. learn from them. Yeah. Sure. Um, also, just staying at the States for a little bit more, it, it, it wasn't your first time out there. You, you competed as an amateur at uh, the RWMAF yeah. World Championships where you won gold. Uh, w w that was It was in fight week, eh? Or, or was it just the World Championships? Uh, yeah, it was sort of the fights, the finals took place at the UFC Fan Expo. Yeah, yeah. Which was yeah. in the fight week. Um, it was, who was fighting? Um, Weidman versus... Oh, I can't remember, but yeah, it was. I think we fought the Saturday morning, and they this was Saturday evening, if I can remember correctly. Sure. Yeah. So, so that must have been quite a good experience as well, yeah. getting to <laughs> fight in in Vegas in the fight yeah. capital, and and you won, and you were undefeated as an amateur, which is kind of steered you into this this momentum now where you are, because you you've stayed undefeated as as a heavyweight prospect. Um, it seems that all that's left really locally is that EFC strap, uh, and 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 you get that shot now. So. It, Let's turn towards that um, Andrew Van Zell. Obviously, the way I see Andrew Van Zell at the moment is is literally the baddest man on the African continent. Um, he, he's a he's a veteran. He's been around a while. We, we know what he's good at. We know what he's well. I don't really know what he's not good at. Uh, you guys might have found some of that. Um, but what do you think of the fight technically from 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 your perspective and from from Andrew as a as a technical fighter? You know, from my side, I'm, I'm very happy it's Andrew I'm facing, you know. Um, I'm not here just to fight for the sake of fighting. I want to test myself. I'm a fighter. Sure. And Andrew is the biggest test. Um, so when, when Graham gave me the call, uh, we didn't hesitate to took the fight. Um, I expect a very technical fight. I expect um, a draining fight. It's going to potentially go five rounds. Um, so, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Andrew. He's been around the block. I mean, um, when I was in standard five or four, you know, what's that grade seven or six yeah sure he was already fighting pro yeah i believe you know, so <laughs> uh, i like that um, i believe i'm the underdog you know from what i've heard um but that also <laughs> just feels from me. what you've heard yeah i like that um so yeah uh i, I just like it it's gonna be a great fight it's gonna be a tough fight yeah it's interesting you say that um from what you've heard as an underdog um it seemed the general consensus was was the moyo rematch it seemed that the moment it, there was a time where maybe that was going to be the fight that they were going to make but i think the way you beat tony mustard was like okay it was almost like like a rite of passage almost you know because i think tony mustard was a good test for you to kind of see you know a lot of people had a couple of rounds in mind it's gonna see how you deal with adversity mm. maybe he's gonna put you and you literally just steamrolled him and <laughs> i think <laughs> graham Cartman was in the position was like okay well yeah. he has to get the shot now you know yeah. I'm honest. When, when at, initially, when I first looked at the fight, I was like, it might be a bit premature for you, um, for for fights as a professional. But it's also when you look back at, at the people you fought, it makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Because it hasn't been like a, there was no like easy welcoming into it <laughs> as a professional. You know what I mean? I mean, it was a, a tiny. Uh, Ivan straight him off that. I mean, uh, these are massive names in South African heavyweight MMA. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. no, no easy task. And, 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 yeah, and, and some people might yeah. say easier fights, but remember, <coughs> it's not about easy, it's about experience as well. Sure, you know? sure. Uh, it's experience, guys. No, 100%. And I mean, uh, both guys, are, both of those guys are tall, difficult to deal with, you know, uh, guys that had r range. And then the next fight after that was, uh, what's his name? Nico Yamji. Nico Yamji, yeah. And I mean, with all due respect to Nico Yamji, maybe not the most technical fighter, but a hell of a dangerous guy to deal with. He's a monster. Yeah, for you sure, know? but um, that, I, I enjoyed that test because he did what I, I thought he was going to do, and that was uh, rush me. You sure. know? And when you rush someone, it's 50-50. You know? Sure. 50% I can go down. Um, so I'm glad I passed that test. If you see those hands of his in the fight, you know, yeah. it came close a couple of times. And, you know, you could hear that wind. I think his fist went through the sound barrier a couple of times in front of my face. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was glad from where I faced a guy like Tiny, who's more on the back foot, who's more, um, how can I say it, waiting for you, sort yeah, of. Um, you counter striker, know? yeah. Yeah, uh, to a guy like Yamji, who literally ran out of his corner towards me. Sure. You know? So that was a nice experience in itself. Sure, sure. So 
basically it was really your 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 efc birth to now was was a baptism of fire it was not like a an easy road you know if there is such a thing but you've dealt with some big names in the heavyweight division and 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 here you are now ready to fight for that belt um it's it's a bit of a strange question but how is your confidence on on dealing with someone like andrew fanzel like obviously a lot of a lot of fighters will will sit and plan and say you know my strategy is to do this and i've got a game plan like that but a lot of fighters are kind of like you know, I'll do what I do. I'm not worried about what he does. So, so which side of the fence are you on that? And, and, and how confident are you in, in your own ability? I'm extremely confident. I wouldn't have taken a fight if I didn't think I, I can win. Sure. I can beat Andrew. Um, I, I, I feel I'm very calculated. You know, um, I work on the technical aspects. Um, you know, um, yeah, we worked hard. We know we worked on specific things. We worked on general things, you know, situations that might arise. I don't like just concentrating on, for instance, Andrew shooting for a takedown or f- taking me down from the clinch. I like to prepare for moments in the fight, you know. Um, it gives you a bit more of a broad, broad preparation on the fight. So, yeah, to answer your question, I'm completely confident. Um, I think people have not yet seen my ability. Sure. Um, I, I trust in the fact that I feel I'm a natural fighter as well. Um, and one of the reasons uh, a couple of people might think I'm the underdog is because I've only fought for about four years now. I'm 28. I started when I was 24, um, but I've got a natural feel for it, you know, um, and I trust that uh, natural instinct, and I'll trust it on the 8th of July as well. 100%. <clears throat> Just uh, you touched on that. Uh, you said you've been fighting for the last four years. H- how did that all come about? Because obviously you're a big Afrikaans boy who, <laughs> who must have had a rugby dream somewhere along the line. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and no, I, 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 I cling to that rugby dream maybe too long, you know, because sure. my brother played for the Springboks twice, okay. and he's a professional rugby player. Um, so I, I, I was trying to get the same route, and that didn't p- p- pan out. Um, yeah, I, I got an injury from rugby, and uh, I was packing on the weight. And if I just look at a burger, I put on two kilos. <laughs> it's just like me <laughs> as yeah. well, man. I feel your pain. <laughs> and um, so uh, I thought, no, man, I, I can't just sit around. So... Um, I started, I uh, joined the MMA club, first of all for fitness, but I've I've been a naughty boy in the past, so <laughs> I, I've been in fights, um, and I, always in the back of my mind, I wanted to fight, I knew I had a knack for this, uh, the way I fight, I was never a bar brawler, you know, yeah. I'd always be the guy trying to stop the peace, and then, you know, I'd go, the guy trying to stop the fight usually ends up being in the fight. Sure. Um, and Especially in Rustenburg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and... I just had an knack for it, so I wanted to test myself. I, I think um, the story about the fitness and whatever, I always say that, but it wasn't. It was the fact that I wanted to. I want to test myself against a fighter. So I went to the MMA club. Uh, the closest one to me was Donny van Yerden's gym. I joined that, and um, and also part why I think I'm already at a title fight situation is I'm too proud to, to say no to a fight or to say I think it's too quick to fight this guy or whatever. So I fought back in amateurs everyone they said listen you're gonna fight this guy i'd say yes and that's done because you're gonna test yourself eventually you know i'm not yet to 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 um defend my record or anything like that i'm yet to be tested i'm yet to fight so um yeah it came about i think i was training for two months and i got my first amateur fight um it was uh, against the guy i feel that they saw me as a stepping stone for him you know to get him as an easy fight for him to start because sure. it was his first fight as well um richard zotendake from sean robinson's gym not Sean Robinson, um, can't remember the gym, gym now. Um, but anyway, it was a very tough fight. Up until now, one of my toughest. Um, and uh, I think I surprised a couple of guys. And thereafter, I just kept taking them. Um, and it's not the first time I'm fighting a high-level jiu-jitsu guy. I fought Kevin Kukumuru before. Yeah. Um, and from what I've heard, he's also very good. I think he's a purple belt going on brown. Um, and I just didn't go to the ground. Um, Dwayne Meredith, good wrestler, just didn't go to the ground. Um so I've been I've been tested in that, um, but yeah. Uh, what was your question again? <laughs> I get so carried away. No, no, no. That's cool, man. We were just uh, we, were, we were going down the journey of how you got into MMA. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So yeah, that's that's about how it, how it went. And then I, I was doing MMA for about five months. Now I'm like probably about seven months, and then the Vegas thing came up. Okay. And yeah. w- were you, were you competing at Five Star at that time already? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and you went on also to become the heavyweight yeah, champion. I competed at Five Star, Star and at Nelspet Fight Night. Okay, yeah, and I went on to. Was that an official thing? Was that just at a bar? <laughs> no, that was official. It was actually, um, uh, president of Martha. 
yeah. Just gonna evade me now. I know him very well, and it's just. Yeah, no, 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 that's good. That's that's all good. But yeah, he was hosting it. <coughs> yeah. Um, I think bad to skip Yeah, bad to skip Yeah, hundred percent. One of the things that came out uh, in your in the build up to your last fight, you you, you had a big talk. Almost, you, you were kind of projecting upon yourself like your power. You weren't really sure where your power was, and I think in the uh, in the post press conference, I actually asked you about it with Tony Mustard. You you were quite impressed that you know that, that you had the ability to put him away like, in the way you did um one of the things about andrew fanzel is is not well it seems very difficult to put him away so in relation to to to, to your power and to putting andrew fanzel do you think you possess the kind of power to to stop andrew fanzel for sure but um nobody and we've been hearing a lot about his iron jaw um there's nobody who can't be knocked out sure that's a fact um, and it's not just about power. I believe I've got the power, yes. Elvis also has the power, but it's also about accuracy, mm. you know. And it's also about timing. And I think that'll be the key difference between Andrew giving him his first knockout. Sure. Yeah, geez, man. He just seems like everyone talks about his iron jaw, but I mean, obviously, he's... he's a challenge. Been, yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> and, and he's been through so many of those kind of like dog fights, yes. you know. So uh, it, it's a... I think that's what makes the fight. I mean, obviously, everyone always talks about stylistically the kind of fights, you know. And I think uh, Andrew's Andrew's become a well-rounded fighter uh, with all the fights he's had. But he just seems to be almost near impossible to put away, if I can put it that way. But then comes away, comes up the young buck, you know what I mean, <laughs> with, with, with a bit of speed maybe and power. And, and I think that's, that's what everyone's waiting to see. Well, that's for me personally what I'm yeah. waiting to see. If 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 there's a heavyweight in South Africa that has the ability to stop Andrew Fanzel, and I think that's that's a big secret for me. Yeah, but that's that's exciting, man. It's it's that's what what sort of um, gets me really excited, you know, um, getting that knockout or TKO or whatever. Um, worst case for me is winning on points. Sure. Um, I'm not even considering losing. Um, I mean, any fighters like that. Um, yeah, and I've seen some of Andrew's fights. You know, he's a real he, a fighter with heart. So it's going to be, if I don't put him away, it's going to be a dirty, filthy, bloody fight, <laughs> yeah. you know. And that's what that's what, what we're here for, you know. Sure. Uh, I want to be in that. I want to go into those dark corners of the rounds. You know, I want to go to that fourth or fifth rounds. Uh, I want to prove also something, um, you know, um, people have been questioning my gas tank, you know, but yeah. I'm, I promise you I'm one of the guys who train the hardest. Sure. Um, so my gas tank will be 100% fine. Sure, and uh, do, do you do you specifically train like uh, strength and conditioning? What is what is your training regime like? Yeah, but it's so many different things. Um, uh, but the toughest part, I think, which prepares me the best is we do ten rounds, ten five hundred rounds of being pushed incredibly hard. I mean, nauseatingly hard. Um, and in there, it'll be a mixture. You know, it'll be some um, deadlifts, whatever. A lot of cross fist um, based training, pad work. But we all s we center it around five minute rounds. You know, and pushing as many rounds as we can. Okay, and uh, are, are you one that's up in the morning, long distances yeah, on the road, yeah, yeah. getting it I wouldn't done? Say I like it, but it needs <laughs> yeah. to be done. Yeah. Yeah, sure, I don't think anybody likes it. <laughs> and um, you're one of those guys who just seem to naturally possess this this raw power that you can't teach or you can't recreate. Where, where do you think that sort of like rawness of power comes from? Oh, thanks, Buzzy. Nice compliment. Um, I don't know. I, 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 could be rugby, you know, um, <laughs> rugby, it's also, you know, in the blood, being an Afrikaans guy, <laughs> you've been training rugby since kindergarten, you know, sure. it's, uh, and you, you get used to this, this uh, um, hits and bruises and stuff, you know, and especially the discipline, I think the best thing rugby taught me was discipline, um, yeah, the power must be coming from there, um, uh, I might not always look the part, but I promise you, I fought guys like Dwayne Meredith. He he looks like he just walked <laughs> off the Men's Health magazine, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I felt stronger than him in the fight. Sure, you know, I could feel I was stronger. Sure. And if you if you know who Dwayne is, <laughs> yeah. forgive him for I saying it, but but <laughs> I was sure. stronger in that fight. Sure, know? and he's 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 a very strong guy. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I love it. I love the Men's Health. Um, and, and that is exactly one of the things about you because you seem to almost be like an unassuming character you yeah. know what I mean it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
maybe at times people are guilty of not taking you too seriously. And, sure. I think, sure. and I think that's a, that's a weapon in itself as well. You know what I mean? I think guys... That kind of pisses me off now. I want to move somewhere. <laughs> 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 so you're a little less face. You can, you can call the spade a spade. I'm a bit of a fat guy. Yeah, you know? sure. In my time, I've got a, like yeah. a tummy. So, yeah. um, yes, but that, that gets me going. Eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that gets sure. Going. Unassuming, but it's cool, man. Because it's... And I think... Um, I think guys maybe underestimate you and I think mm. maybe fans underestimate you as well. Yeah. And it's and it's one of those things like I say, I think the funny thing about the fight game is is people always judge you on your on, on what's happened, what's just happened in front of them, you know what I mean? What's just happened in your most current fight. Mm. And people even myself, I'm guilty of it. I've kind of like I had forgotten the kind of people you dealt with up till now. You know what I mean? It's it's been a hell of a, a sh short career for a professional fauna, mm -hmm. but it's been a hell of a career as well. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's like that, man. I think it's a, you're an unassuming character, which makes you probably the most dangerous out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what I wanted to ask you, uh, a hypothetical question, if we can just move like look forward be, beyond Andrew. Let's say hypothetically uh, you win that fight, uh, you, you get the belt. Who would you defend who would you like to defend your title against or who uh, would you like to see next that's easy it has to be Elvis okay uh, Elvis is the best guy out there um, after Andrew um, I heard at the press conference Juan made a claim of something he wanted to fight the winner between me and uh, Andrew and uh, I don't think that's fair at the moment uh, either Andrew ugh, um, Elvis and Juan must fight and the winner gets to take me on or Elvis okay Lining them up, lining yeah. them up. I quite like that fight with Alvis and Ruan as a as a <laughs> number one contender. Um, do you, do you think the the heavyweight division in South Africa is, is is in one of the best states it's ever been? Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, especially since I started following it, I think it's very healthy now. Um, and the guys want to fight. You know, a guy like Alvis is looking for a fight where he can, um, sure. and uh, me as well. You know. Andrew's always up for a fight. Um, so the guys are fighting. The, I don't really think there's guys who's declining fights or not want to fight. And and the talent also well, you know. Um, guys that should be looked out for is like Nico Yamji. Yeah. Um, and um, Mbati and Peta, or he's now Mbati Gizi. Yeah. Uh, but I fought him in amateurs as well. And him and Nico fought also, uh, I think, two FCs back. Um that guy's got very good hands, you know. I wasn't able to see the fight between him and Nico. Uh, Nico won, so for me, it doesn't matter. I've beat both of them. Sure. Um, but still, those guys, don't throw them away because of loss are two, you know. They might not be the most technical guys, but, but the way they swing and the power, you know, it's uh, any given Sunday they can they can win. So I think the depth, um, to answer your question, is, is at a very, very good stage. There's also there's a new arrival uh, from Durban. I don't want to hack his name, and I'm sorry if I do. It's Emin Debella. I think he's something like that mm -hmm. tall guy doctor he looks like he's got insane muay thai and he's a monster guy he's tall and rangy and so it seems like there's there's a lot of guys arriving and, and the heavyweights is such a in demand yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. weight class you know and it, and it seems we just have an abundance at the moment which yeah. is which is which is really cool and keeps it on your toes obviously uh, w with that in mind you know um heavyweights especially any he good heavyweight around the world i think that shows enough promise like yourself if i mean if, if you can go on to knock on the title get that title maybe a couple of defenses i'm pretty sure we're going to have a bit of international mm. international exposure for yourself Courtney, yeah. is, is, is that is that something in your mind like uh g getting getting international fights yeah for sure um look heavyweights because they are look you know it's it's seldom that you find good heavyweights um it's always one of the one of the divisions with the least fighters in. Um, so your call up to UFC or to any American or uh, other brands uh, promotions would come sooner than a, say a middleweight or whatever. Sure. That's obvious, um, and that's one of the reasons I went to train at AKA. I wanted to see what that's like, you know, get myself prepared because I don't see myself losing, you know, anytime soon. Um, and you know, because being heavyweight, like I've just mentioned another three four wins and and you might get that call you know um where other guys would have to have 20 wins sure um, heavyweights are luckier in that aspect i guess so that's one of the reasons i went to aka is to get prepared to that level and to see what level it is you know okay and um 
let's let's again look look into the hypothetical future uh if, if something like that came w would you try and, and base your training out of ak or, or would you stay here yeah uh, i don't know um look i i can't base it there now i do camps there but i've got a business here mm. um and my business still comes first so no i'd be training here i do more camps there um okay. but yeah I'd, i wouldn't i wouldn't immigrate in that sense sure and um your ultimate goal in mma is is that the ufc yes is, is that fair to say yeah. and and you're quite confident you can get yeah. there and, and, and get the job yes. done there was it uh, with all due respect to mr potts he had a he had a hard time in the ufc he did. it, it he was did. it was a difficult run and he, he had some tough dudes and that's also why i ask would would you try and base your training more there or stay here because i think that's a big difference and it's something you mentioned earlier is that it's training partners and the abundance of training partners yeah. and having that access to to ufc caliber sparring partners and ufc caliber knowledge and i think yeah. in south africa we're starting to see a lot more of this a lot of younger guys going overseas um i mean jp bay is now chad hanacom it looks like boyd allen's on his way as well uh, martin van staden has got um uh, a couple of things lined up he's, he's moved over his management i think we're slowly starting to to, to yeah. understand that it's not a matter that we can't hang with the best we just don't have that access to that caliber of sparring partner yeah but you see uh, important thing to remember there and that's that's my opinion on why Rwanda didn't do very well that side is you shouldn't over analyze or overthink you know it's sort of like the guys going to analysis paralysis almost it's still a cage fight you sure. know if you're gonna stand there over analyzing everything and thinking you're gonna get knocked out you know you, you can't you can't process everything that fast so it goes about muscle memory i think also and then being able to attack still being aggressive you know um except now for wrestling um those guys aren't technically light years away from us but i think they are more comfortable with their skill sets which allows them to be more of an animal inside the cage you sure. know um a lot of times guys in my opinion try to be too uh, i don't know if too technical is the right word but it's like they're over analyzing you no, know I'm, I'm with and, you and they shouldn't forget it it's still a cage fight you know 100 percent. it's 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 actually a conversation I had with somebody a little while back about uh, Gareth's fight against uh, mm. Marcin Sedenblad, the, the, the taller guy. It seemed like there was too much emphasis on a game plan. You exactly. know what I mean? Instead sort of, of waiting. Exactly. Yeah. And for me, technically, when you're dealing with a, with a longer guy and a rangier guy who's going to throw head kicks, that's the last place you want to be is hanging on the outside trying to implement a game yeah. plan you want to try and close that distance and it's exactly what you say i think guys over analyze the fact instead of just trying to make it a fight at the end of the yeah, day yeah and, and, and fight happen. your game plan it's a lot of the times i feel the guys train for their opponent's specific strengths and in the fight it's kind of like they give them way and say okay right fight your best abilities fight your game plan because i want to wait to see your strengths and and um, um enforce my counters on that where well, you should rather be focusing on your um style of fighting and your game plan and what you're going to do to beat them other than uh, instead of waiting to see what they are going to do you know and countering on on, on what you learn to to defend their strengths so um so um, um sort of um assert your game plan your way of fighting instead of waiting for them to do what they want yeah 100 percent yeah man it's exciting times anyway in the, in the local divisions so sun city efc 62 all right 61, 61. sorry 61 yeah. 8th of july it's a homecoming for you in essence back to your original home w w do you expect a, a, a mad crowd of support there from the local lads yeah i do i do a lot of my local friends are going to be there looking forward to that as well and uh i've been hearing a couple of mini buses going through from <laughs> free anything and stuff so yeah sure. cool i think it's going to be a dog show afterwards uh, yeah the 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 dross in uh Rustenberg is going to be working overtime. Eh? The boys are going to be <laughs> pulling in there hard. And um, yeah, man, we, we we look forward to that fight. It's I think it's a cracking fight. I, I think I hope nobody's sleeping on it. It's, it's it's going to be a historic fight, just as historic as the last one. It's a you know it's it's a it's a young the young dog versus the old dog. You know, which yeah. is always exciting and it's 
uh, interesting st- uh, stylistically. It's very interesting, and I think it's going to be a hell of a show, man. And we can see you're obviously extremely confident, and then you're ready to fight. I'm sure you could probably fight tomorrow. You'd mm, be ready yeah, to go. Yeah. And again, man, thank you so much for your time and giving us up and, and, and giving some insights on your fight. And we wish you all the best for the rest of your training camp and, and all the best on the fight night, man. Thanks, Alice. It's a total honor to be here, man. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you very much. And we're out.